Hello, I'm Bob Larson, host of the nationally syndicated talk show, Talk Back. My concern about Satanism is the result of research conducted to write my book, Satanism, The Seduction of America's Youth. What you're going to see on this video will be revealing, shocking, and for some of you, disturbing. But it's important information you need to know. In 1966, a one-time carnival performer named Anton LaVey shaved his head, donned a hooded black robe, conducted a devil-worshipping black mass, and established the Church of Satan. LaVey's book, The Satanic Bible, which ritualized his religion, has sold more than 500,000 copies. Today, Anton LaVey is a recluse who grants no interviews and makes no public pronouncements. See now the Reverend Anton Zandor LaVey, who is the founder and high priest of the First Church of Satan. Anton Zandor LaVey. I understand that, uh, what are you doing? I'm giving a blessing to the, to the audience. I don't think they appreciate it. They were throwing it back. Well, they thought it was a curse. Uh, Would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? Sign Completely of the curse? different. How does it go? No, not at you, not at you people out there in the audience, but this is the difference. Aim it toward Red China, would you? <laughs> this is the sign of the horn. A curse sign, the two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast, you know, I always over. figured if I ever it's met the, de the devil, it'd have dirty fingers. Go on. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Well, well. Dirty, dirty fingers. Well, that's because I've been uh, fooling around with your equipment. Never right? mind. Don't blame it on the studio. Go on with it. All right. So that's the sign of the horn, and then what happened? Is that it? Well, the other ones, too. Yeah, what are the other ones? The other ones, one of them's the pox sign. That's three fingers extended. A pox on you? A pox on you. During the Middle Ages, this yeah. was... Oh, yeah. Yes. But You're originally, a bad cat. You well, know. you have to be bad to be good. Is it you? true that you teach people how to make voodoo dolls and stick pins in them to, uh, to hurt people? That's right. I believe that hate is necessary in a controlled way just as much as love is necessary. But could it really work? Of course it works. It's been working in primitive societies for a long, long time. Well, then how come you don't pick out the despots of the world and make dolls like that and stick pins in them so that the... Oh, you want them to win. You want the bad guys to win, right? Well, I don't say they're necessarily the bad guys or the good guys. It's not up... The affairs of the Church of Satan are overseen by two people. His daughter, Zena LeVay, and Mr. Nicholas Shrek, founder of the Werewolf Order of Satanism. Zena LeVay and Nicholas Shrek are the chief spokespersons for the Church of Satan they are the two people you will see me confront during this video. Christian media, the Christian media is now going through its last very extravagant death throes. Jim and where, Tammy Baker, where, where do you get these Swaggered, from? all of the evangelists are slowly falling out of favor. And as we move into the satanic century, we're going to see Christianity's last gasp. But I the misconceptions is that the Church of Satan is a physical building where, where black-robed people come to congregate. The Church of Satan is an idea more than a building. It is a large network of people internationally who are committed to the ideas of Satanism. Oh, would, you would see that's maybe. your problem. <laughs> you have, in, in the satanic world of the future, Christian churches will be allowed to continue because they pose no threat to us. We don't need Christianity. Christianity needs us. Sure. So we will let it. Sure, sure. Tell that to the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto. Why, we're not going to put you in gas ovens. We're not going to kill you. We just want you to wear no, an armband No, no, I'm not now. saying that. I mean, on we the, just want you... No, no, but, no. But I'm not Hitler, saying I'm a humanitarian. Hitler, don't, get, don't try to whitewash Hitler me. Hitler created a reality. Was mm -hmm. it evil? Hitler was a masterful black magician. Of course, he created a reality. Was it evil? It was in three points. The masses. We have no regard for the masses. Satanism is a religion for the elite. It is a religion for leaders. It's a religion for competent people. It's not a religion for anyone who wants to be a Satanist. We don't say welcome the to the club. The homeless, the handicapped, those with I don't multiple care. sclerosis. I don't want the lie. homeless, the handicapped. The people That's your in job. Mother Teresa's home you've for the take, dying and the take, destitute, they need not apply. I don't want them. You've taken that on your shoulders. That's your job. You're doing a great job with the homeless. You help everyone. We're helping those who help themselves, as it says in your Bible. 
And you can take the weak. Oh, it doesn't you, say that in the Bible. You can take the decrepit. You can take people who can't help themselves. We don't want them. It's simple. It's very the simple. Is, the homeless you don't want to shelter? No, I don't want to shelter people who can't take care of themselves. Why? Yes. No, and just to wait, me, just wait a minute. Let me. To, you, to Zena, me, it's disgustingly Zena. outrageous Zena. that you would help these weak people who are draining our resources, who are causing so many problems. We could be doing positive things in the world. Zena, I want to ask these you. weaklings are taking away well, all of uh, our well, energy and resources, and you've decided to help them. That's disgusting to me. You've never been. This is your album, Nicholas. It's mm -hmm. called Radio Werewolf. The fiery summons. You're pretty good at marketing yourself. That's well, the that's devil's place. <laughs> Illusion and show. You mean the devil is alive and well at Madison Avenue? Of course. Advertising. I is think the you devil's and I agree with that. Uh, you're you you're a self-described satanic musician. You've heard his music, Zena. What what does it sound like? You tell me. It's more along the lines of classical music. It would be the equivalent to it is satanic gospel, I guess you could say. It would be the equivalent of what you have. Except the word gospel means good news in this case. It's good news bad to news. us. It's good news. Bad news for you. What does the music do to you when you listen to his music? How do, does it affect you in a certain way? Is there something about the, the mood, the, the ambiance of this? What does it do to you? Well, the music that, and I'm beginning to work with Nicholas on his music, we make music for a purpose. It's not just background music, it's not just you know, fluffy, light stuff. It's not, it's this for, is not elevator satanic music. It's yeah. ritualistic music. It is music it is that by, by even the act of listening to it, you are participating in a satanic ritual. By listening to it, so if I put this on and listen to it, I'm participating. But I'm just, you're a listener, because I'm asking you, how does it make you feel? I it's mean, very stirring. It's very emotionally charged. You can't listen to this music and say you don't feel something because you do. I'm sure you would probably feel either hate or fear or rage or something. I but know, but he's a great musician. I well, just you think the guy's know. very talented. Right, but I would say that someone who would listen to it would probably feel very similarly to how one might feel if they're listening to classical music that is and bombastic but, and but here's, a song, here's a song called Incubus, which is about uh, sexual cohabitation with demons, a, a human being cohabiting with a spirit being. Right. That's what it is. That's correct. True. So, uh, and? <laughs> how does that make you feel? <laughs> well, this is another I mean, This is a woman mythology. cohabiting with a demon. Right. There are succubuses, too, which Does that make you want to do it, or what? Zena, if this new satanic century truly does come into being, if your numbers increase in the Church of Satan, and as you would hope the numbers of Christians would decrease, and then suddenly you are the people with the new social order. Describe to me what that social order would be like. Well, I'm very much into philosophy. A lot of different philosophers that I've read over the years, like uh, Nietzsche, uh, Darwin, Freud, uh, Alistair Crowley, and uh, finally Anton LaVey. And uh, fortunately, he's you know still alive, so I got to meet with him and talk about his ideas and things like that. And uh, in America, Satanism is uh, sensationalized and kind of misunderstood and people associate it with worshiping the devil and things like that. But it's really a philosophy about uh, individuality and self-preservation. It's about, uh, you know, being your own god. Russian President Vladimir Putin was late to his meeting with Pope Francis at the Vatican. But once he stepped out of his limousine, there were only handshakes and grins. Putin approached Pope Francis with a slight grin on his face and the two shook hands. Next, the two met privately for about 50 minutes. 
the discussion focused on the ongoing war in Ukraine and the situation in the Middle East. According to a Vatican spokesman, Pope Francis told Putin that both sides in Ukraine must abide by the ceasefire agreement and that humanitarian workers should be allowed access. The Pope told Putin that the international community must come together for peace in Iraq and Syria and to protect religious minorities. After their private session, the two exchanged gifts. The Russian leader explained the embroidery that he gave to the Pope. In return, Pope Francis gave President Putin a medallion of the Angel of Peace and a copy of Evangeli Gaudium. And with that, the meeting was over. The two shook hands and the Pope made a familiar request. Following his meeting with Pope Francis, the Russian president spoke with Archbishop Paul Richard Gallagher, the Vatican's Secretary for Relations with States. 